Now, how much do you think this laptop costs? 2,000 ringgit, 4,000 ringgit? Well, guess what? This 16-inch laptop here costs just 1,300 ringgit, which I got it from a Shopee sale two months ago. It is the Deer R16 Pro. It is a Chinese laptop that looks really good by itself. It has a pretty good 16-inch 2.5K IPS display, and it is a 16 by 10 ratio, and it has ports that shames even my 6,000 ringgit ASUS VivoBook. Now, despite its cheap price, what does this laptop offer? And is it the real deal after two months of using it? Let's find out in today's video. Now, this is not the first time that we checked out cheap Chinese laptops on the channel, and this is by far the most impressive package that I've got it at a really cheap price. Now, the Deer R16 Pro is a 16-inch laptop, as the name already suggests, and what really impresses me is that they managed to fit a really nice display onto this laptop here, and it's just not any crap TFT display, but it is a IPS display, which is only usually available on laptops that's at least three times of its price here. Even though it's a really nice display with good viewing angles and all that, I, there's one thing that I'm still not really satisfied, which is this just black bezel on the top here, which you can move the screen around and all that. So Deer tells me that this is a process that um, they decide to let the screen move a little bit because they can't just uh, stick all the bezels like put it tightly just in case it will affect the screen quality and cause bleeding which to be honest i kind of accept that fact and it is a very small compromise that you will need to accept and if we look at the entire build quality no doubt it is actually pretty plasticky by all means but when you look at the photos itself it actually looks like a really expensive premium laptop but of course when you got it on hand well it's pretty much plastic anywhere now let's take a look at the hardware features before i share more about my thoughts here now uh, if you look at this front panel here, there's just, there's just this Deer branding right here. Now, for those of you who doesn't know who Deer is, they are actually a ODM, which they actually produce laptops for other brands and so on. And Deer is basically their very own brand, which they have probably taken some uh, standard laptop designs and brand it as their own. So this is the reason why it is so affordable because they already have the chassis and everything ready, which actually cuts down a lot of design costs. And this is the reason why you can get it at such a cheap price. Now, looking at this entire working area here, you can see that it has a pretty generous keyboard. It is a full-size keyboard with a number pad area. And I can tell you that the keycaps are actually larger than some gaming laptops that I have used. And you know what? The typing experience on this thing is actually not too bad. Of course, the keys do feel a little mushy as compared to those more expensive laptops. But I mean, you're paying just 1,300 ringgit for this and you should definitely expect that. But I can tell you that this is not the worst keyboard that I have used. Now, one thing I do really like here is that even like the directional buttons here do feel standard size. They are not being shrinked purposely or whatsoever. And the numpad area has the same keycap size as the main keyboard area, which is quite impressive. And most importantly, Deer didn't compromise any of the usable keys like you know most chinese laptops that if you manage to get some of them they will have some uh, smaller keys such as on the control button or the shift button which actually feels pretty odd but the keyboard on this laptop just feels pretty good in my opinion as a budget laptop you also get a pretty big touchpad right here and there's even a fingerprint reader on the top left corner which is just incredible for such a budget laptop but of course despite the good keyboard the touchpad is not the best out there and in fact after using for two months the the touchpad seems to have some precision issues as you can see when i'm touching the the cursor seems to be moving all around but that's a really small matter because i usually attach a uh, external mouse to it uh using it now let's talk about uh, other features. Now, you do also get like speaker grills here, but I can tell that they are actually fixed speaker grills because they are just printed on top. So sound doesn't travel on the top, which obviously is not MacBook sound quality. And look at the side here, you get some ports. And let me tell you that this port actually shames many, 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 many other mainstream laptops out there. You get two USB 3.0 A ports on the right, a micro SD card slot, a headphone jack. And once you turn over to the left, you get one more USB A port, a full-size HDMI, mind you, a full-size HDMI 
2.0 port and finally you even get a USB-C port but unfortunately it doesn't support USB PD charging but then I mean guys it is a USB-C port on the 1300 ringgit laptop that is something that you really really don't expect out there and finally you get the standard barrel charging port there which is I believe some way to save cost when it comes to this power management and all that now let's get hands-on with the Deer R16 Pro. Now the first thing that I want to show you guys is the performance of this laptop. As I already mentioned before, this laptop is powered by an Intel N95 processor, which is kind of like a rebash Intel Celeron processor uh, without the Celeron name because you know why when people hear the word Celeron, they would assume it's a pretty bad performing laptop. But by all means, Intel does really do a good job uh, on the Intel N95. Personally, I think it is a very decent entry-level chip for entry-level laptops just like this. So the configuration that I got here is the 12 gigabyte RAM model with 512 gigs of storage. Now, as you can see, we are already getting 69% of memory usage with nothing open at all, which to be honest, is pretty high. I mean, I blame Windows for all that. And there's definitely no way of upgrading the RAM of this laptop because it is actually a soldered LP DDR5 RAM running at 4,400 megahertz. Not the fastest frequency out there, but it is decent enough, right? So uh, the processor, as you can see, it is now running on battery, which is why you're seeing that it's not fully utilizing. But in most cases, when I am using uh, the laptop, it can just go up to 100% all the time. So without further ado, I'm just going to do some demo. I'm just going to run Microsoft Edge. I'm just going to visit our website. And I'm just going to open a couple of tabs to show you guys how the real world performance actually is. Now, as you can see, it's actually not too bad considering how fast I'm opening tabs and all that. Um, I can just continue to go to TheVerge.com and just visit our friends at Lawyer.net at Soya Chin Chow. You can see it's, it's actually not too bad when it comes to opening new tabs and going to various websites, even the scrolling and all that feels really, really smooth for an entry-level laptop. Now, if you were comparing to those cheaper Chinese laptops that came with a Intel Celeron and 4500 processor, I can guarantee you that you wouldn't be getting such kind of performance at all. Though, of course, you can see that loading times can be a little slow at times, but as an entry-level laptop, it's really, really acceptable. So um, I'm gonna let you guys hear the speaker quality here because I can tell you that as an entry-level laptop, this speaker is actually pretty decent for what it is. Now let's play Unity by Fat Red. Right, so this is how the speaker quality sounds like. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below because personally, I think this is a pretty good quality speaker for a budget laptop like this. Now, as you can see, performance is great. When I switch between tabs, it does have some reloads, but I can tell you that it is pretty acceptable for an entry-level laptop. Now, this laptop has a webcam, of course, and what I am impressed is that it has a privacy shutter. Look at this. Look at this, it has a physical privacy shutter. They really know how to make good hardware here, right? But let's find out how the webcam quality is, shall we? So let's run the camera app and look at this. Look at how pixelated this camera is because it is a pretty bad VGA quality camera, which is something that you would have been using back 20, 30 years ago when the World Wide Web just started uh, being trendy on video calls. Yeah, this is how bad the camera quality is, but it's there if you want to use it for casual video calls and all that. At least if you forgot to bring your high quality webcam, you do at least get an option there, all right? So this is how the webcam looks like. And overall, I have to say that this laptop feels very good when it comes to its basic performance. What about gaming? Which is why we are going to find out right now because we have our SSD connected right here with games installed and we are going to run Steam and run GTA 5 and show you guys how it performs. Now, the first thing that we got to do here is to set to a nice resolution because currently, as you can see, we are now at a pretty crappy 800 by 600 pixel resolution. So let's give it at least 720p, shall we? So we're going to up the resolution to 1280 by 720 because 
you know, this is by all means an entry-level laptop. We are not expecting this to perform great at 1080p gaming, all right? So let's just apply changes and look at it. We are good and uh, obviously it looks a bit weird because we are now on a 16 by uh, 9 aspect ratio on a 16 by 10 screen. So let's just ensure that there's no vSync. I'm just going to turn off vSync for now because we want the maximum FPS. Look at it! We are getting 64 FPS on the menu screen, all right, which is uh, pretty hopeful right now. So we are just going to head on to story mode and find out if the game runs. Now look at this, guys. We are getting pretty impressive, I would say. Not too bad playable frame rates on GTA 5 here. We're getting 32 FPS, so we're just going out for a drive with Franklin. Now, to be honest, I don't think any of those older cheap Chinese laptops will be able to run this game at all. And this is all thanks to that new Intel N95 chip because it has a faster iGPU which actually enables this game to run properly. And as you can see, there's no artifacts happening on the game as well. So yeah, of course, like it does dip way below like 30 app, uh, way below 30 FPS. Now we are even like at 22 and the frame rates uh, are not really consistent. There's obvious frame drops and that. But you can see, like, I mean, this is not a gaming laptop by all means. You shouldn't be buying this to play GTA 5. But the fact that it can run the game like this shows that how powerful such cheap Chinese laptops have gotten over the years. Now, look at it. It does render things really well. There's no artifacts that I can see. 100% of CPU usage and 99% of the iGPU, which is normal because it does require a lot of resources to run this game. Now, what happens if we go up to 1080p? Let's find out, shall we? So let's go over to settings here. And let's bump the resolution up to 1080p. All right. It's going to look really beautiful on this screen because this is a 2.5k display by all means, but I'm expecting a serious, serious frame drop. Okay. Now look at it, we are now at 15 FPS, 16, and I'm going to expect more starters as I bump into something else. But yeah, you totally get the point, right? I mean, how is it that such a cheap 1300 ringgit laptop can run such a game? The next game that we are testing here is Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. Now, this is one of my favorite games to test on entry-level hardware because it doesn't require that much of compromise on graphics quality to play well. And I think at this point of time, this game still looks really good in terms of graphics quality. Now, as you can see, we are now on 1920 by 1200 pixel resolution, which is a 16 by 10 resolution. Obviously, we are not going to push it to this, to this display's maximum resolution because it will definitely not work well. So we are on the low graphics level and at the menu screen here, we are getting 41 FPS. Definitely not the most playable frame rate, but as you can see, this is an entry level hardware. You do have to forgive it, all right? Let's uh, try to continue the game. It is a really nice game that I still recommend anyone to go check out. Okay, we're starting off in Wei's apartment. Now we are not seeing a really great FPS here because um, that's normal because uh, on the main menu, you are not rendering that much of things. But once you're in the game itself, you can see how bad the FPS actually drop. And we are like using, it's like using 99% of the GPU, but just 49, 50% of the CPU, which is interesting to see, all right? Now, um, I'm just going to drop the resolution a little because this is definitely not playable by all means at a 1200p resolution. So I'm just probably going to drop to 720p to see if things get better. So let's just go to options display and let's go back to 720p. Right, we're back on 720p and obviously we're getting slightly better FPS here. As you can see, it is, it can actually be more demanding than GTA 5 at times. Look, we're at 25 FPS, but I don't know what the actual FPS will be when we are going around Hong Kong City. This is a really nice game. Now let's do some gameplay here. Okay, picking up my bike. Okay, so this is like console level FPS, PS4 FPS, by the way. So yeah, if you're fine with playing Sleeping Dogs on PS4 and getting such kind of frame rates, this is what you get on this 1300 ringgit laptop here. Overall, I have to say that the input lag is 
pretty good. There's not much of input lag that I can detect here. All right, overall, FPS is pretty consistent, hovering between 27 to 30 FPS on average, which I think is really good as a entry-level laptop in terms of gaming performance, which you totally can't do it at all on like some hardware. Now, as you can see, this 1300 ringgit laptop has some serious firepower despite its entry-level hardware. But despite all the good stuff that I mentioned earlier, the only bad thing about this laptop is battery life. Because based on my extremely lightweight usage of using it for web browsing and for some documents, it only lasts up to three hours, which actually falls below average a lot of mainstream laptops in the market right now. But to be honest, that is a very, very minor compromise that I find on the laptop here, which to be honest, if you really find that a problem, just plug it into a wall socket. I'm sure you would have to charge it all the time because the charger is actually not a very heavy power brick and that is, should be with you in the back all the time. So yeah, the Deer R16 Pro is a very impressive entry-level laptop that I recommend you guys go check out. And if you're even worried about after-sales service, they do have a dedicated service center in Malaysia, which is incredible of all other Chinese laptop brands that I've seen on Shopee and Lazada because they are probably the only one that has a physical service center here in KL. So you can send it to that place if you happen to have any hardware issues on this laptop. So yeah, that's all for my thoughts on the Deer R16 Pro. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to us for more videos coming right up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.